Welcome back to the Amateur Extra License Study. We are now in 6 Delta, so that is sub-element 6 Delta, and this is the motley crew, for sure, of questions. It spans a whole bunch of different things. Question number one out of this sub-element is, what is piezoelectricity? A characteristic of materials that generate a voltage when stressed and that flex when a voltage is applied. So piezoelectricity, your multimeter most likely has some sort of piezoelectric buzzer on the inside. And what happens is it applies voltage and it goes beep, and that's where you get the beep from. So you can also take those and tap on them, and guitarists know this very well, you can have a piezoelectric pickup in your guitar, and the vibrations produce a similar output of electricity. What is the equivalent circuit of a quartz crystal? That's a series RLC in parallel with a shunt capacitor representing electrode and stray capacitance. And I think I have that here. This is sort of what it looks like. That is the equivalent circuit to the uh, quartz crystal. Which of the following is an aspect of piezoelectric effect? That is mechanical deformation of material due to the application of voltage. Same thing. If you apply voltage to this bad boy, it vibrates. What is vibration? It's a mechanical deformation. Why are the cores of inductors and transformers sometimes constructed of thin layers? And that is to reduce power loss from eddy currents in the core. And uh, somewhere I have, there we go. This is the best picture I could find. I had one taken apart, but I don't know what I did with it, that showed you, it was an old Radio Shack one, so it was probably already open, open anyways, but the transformer is actually a bunch of little layers put together, and you can see that they're welded together right here. And that is to reduce the eddy currents. It makes it a little more efficient. How do ferrite and powdered iron compare for use as an inductor core? So ferrite cores generally require fewer turns to produce a given inductance value. So this is a ferrite core. You could get a very high inductance value off of this big core because you can wrap a whole bunch around it. Now, if this was powdered iron, you could make it, it would be for a smaller value of inductance. So it depends. You, you choose your material based on what your inductance value you want. And there are factors that affect your inductance. So air has a permeability of one. Soft iron core has permeability of 600. There's a whole chart. Everything has some form. This is your permeability right here. So um, iron can go all the way up to 200,000 for permeability. And you can go and look at other types of materials that you could see have different permeabilities. So carbon steel, which is a hard steel, is only 100. Nickel, 100 to 600. Um, hey, that's cool. Neodymium magnet, 1.05. Pretty close to air, it seems. Alrighty, so Teflon is a 1. How about that? Superconductors. Um, good luck with that. Okay, so that, that's going to come up in the next question anyways. That's why I went ahead and looked. What core material property determines the inductance of an inductor? And that is the permeability. And so there's a whole formula for that, that you could um, find the permeability and then figure out what the inductance of an air core inductor is. If it's in permeability of one, then it, you know, you number of turns, the spacing of the turns, the diameter. Okay, so let's stick to the test. The inductance of an inductor, the property, permeability. What is the current that flows in the primary winding of a transformer when there is no load on the secondary winding? 
So if you have on the primary, which I'm assuming on this one is the primary, and nothing is connected, it's just going to be a big fat magnet. Because we know if you have current passing through a wire, it's, it creates a magnetic field. Well, what happens in transformer or an inductor is that it it concentrates that amount of magnetivity or magnetizing current. So that is the magnetizing current, current that flows in the primary winding of a transformer when there's no load on the secondary or the output is called magnetizing current. Which of the following materials has the highest temperature stability of its magnetic characteristics? That is powdered iron. So ferrite is going to be more susceptible to temperature changes than powdered iron. What devices are commonly used as VHF and UHF parasitic suppressors at the input and output terminals of a transistor HF amplifier? And that is going to be ferrite beads. Now, a ferrite bead is a lot smaller than this. They're really tiny. Some of them are super tiny, and they wrap the wires in it. Now, if you want to see another use for ferrite beads, look at the old space program. They used ferrite beads, I think, as, as some sort of storage for memory. What is the primary advantage of using a toroidal core instead of a solenoidal core as an inductor? So a solenoidal core is more of just a rod of material with windings around it. And that's cool and all, but toroidal confines most of the magnetic field to the core of the material. That way you don't have a lot of crosstalk between them. If you use one that is solenoidal, that magnetic flux is going to propagate out and be picked up by something else. So that's the beauty of toroidal cores. Which type of core material decreases inductance when, in ins when inserted into a coil? That is going to be brass. I built an AM FM radio one time, and a way to check was it, it came from Radio Shack, and it was a piece of heat shrink with a piece of brass on one end and a piece of uh, powdered iron on the other end. And you could hold the brass to it and see one thing, and then you could hold the in, the other end to it, and it and you could watch what would happen, and you could decide: Do I need less inductance or more inductance? Brass decreases the inductance value. What causes inductor saturation? So saturation. It's sort of like if you take a washcloth and just dunk it in water. Eventually, it's not going to be able to absorb anymore. So that is operation at excessive magnetic flux. These work with magnetic flux. So when you have your windings, there's a magnetic flux going on in this thing. If you get that point to the excessive point, it's going to saturate, and then it's probably going to get hot and break. Okay, so like I said, this was a motley crew of a section. I hope you've had fun with it. I've had a pretty good amount of time making these videos. So if you have been helped by this video, please like it. Subscribe to the channel. It's free. It helps me. I'm Robbie, W1RCP73.